Hi everyone. I haven't done a garden tour in a while and that's because I've been working really hard to rebuild my soil. I was building soil here. This was a wooded lot when we first moved here 18 years ago and I spent most of my time building good soil and that's the key to a good garden is good soil. And then some things happened and uh, some of the soil went bad. I don't know if you've seen some of my previous videos, but a neighbor's cat was using the garden and it wasn't well. It was a sick cat and it killed one of my grapevines up there. I thought, okay, I'm going to need to replace some of the soil. It was partially my fault because I watered in the cat's mess instead of picking it up because I found it too disgusting. But anyway, that, that was only just part of the problem. So I decided I wanted to replace a lot of the soil. And then all the COVID stuff hit. And we couldn't get any local soil. My soil was built primarily from my own compost, from seaweed, and from local soil that we brought in originally, as well as manure. And we had our own chickens, so we were building really great soil with the uh, chicken manure as well. But uh, the town uh, didn't let us continue to have chickens. So anyway, the soil went bad. Not everywhere, but we decided to get some soil. So I did a lot of research, like I always do, and where I couldn't get anything locally because of all the COVID stuff, I found some soil at Kent. And... That's a, the local hardware store. And I checked the brand and it was from just, it was still an Atlantic Canadian product and it was OMRI certified, it was certified organic. And I thought, okay, well, actually when I looked at the price of it, it was pretty inexpensive. They had sheep compost, cow compost, mm, fish compost, and topsoil. So I had bought a pallet load of it and had it delivered and I put it everywhere in the garden. Just put it everywhere. Now it didn't seem quite right to me. It didn't, it didn't look right, but it didn't look like my other topsoil, but I said, okay, well, I mean, it's, it's all organic. And everything went downhill from there. So it's been two years now of struggling with rebuilding the soil. And a couple of other local people had the same soil and had the same problems as me. I was having deformed plants and plants that just would, the plant would, the seed would germinate and then the plant would die. And I lost a lot of work. I lost two years worth of food. I lost two years worth of seed. And now I'm my third year of labor, but it's finally coming back around. So... Now, the company said that their issue was that it was not a herbicide and that it was way too much carbon. And it was a bad batch, apparently. Um, I'm not quite sure if I believe that, but anyway, I have to deal with it, whatever it is. Now, if I had my time back, I probably would have just scooped it all out and got new soil and started over. But where I'm only on a half acre, it's not like I farm in one large field. So I have a lot of different areas and a lot of beds and things like that to have to um, replace soil in. So I decided to just amend it. So we've been amending it with loads of seaweed and horse manure that we found from a local person that, you know, they feed their horse well. And making compost teas. I've been actually doing some studying on agrohomeopathy and using some of those techniques as well. And finally, things are starting to pick up, nowhere near what they used to be. Now, I do have another challenge here, and that's that I let the perimeter trees grow. Since the subdivision moved in around me, I wanted to keep my privacy and keep my trees. And by letting them grow, I'm contending with a lot of shade. So most areas of my garden only get about four hours of sunlight a day. And it's already a very short season and a cold climate. This has been a very warm year, but, you know, a short season and a cold climate living in Newfoundland. So we have our challenges as it is. So adding uh, shade on top of that and poor soil <laughs> made the garden very challenging. 
and I was thinking to myself, I, I really feel bad. I did recommend that soil to some people too, and I, and it really bothered me quite a lot because I um, I really feel bad for people who bought that soil that were first time gardeners. I knew that I could grow, and I've always grown very good vegetables, and I've had permaculture here for 18 years, and you know I I knew my capabilities, and I still was even questioning whether I was doing something wrong. So for people who are beginner gardeners, I think it might have been extremely discouraging. So if you were gardening in the last two years and unsuccessful, please look at trying a new soil and trying again. Don't get discouraged and just keep keep trying because I know I've been hearing from all over the world that there's been contaminated soil sold just about everywhere. And I can imagine, like I said, how how discouraging that would be to someone who was a new gardener and would probably just think, well, I don't have a green thumb, so I can't grow anything. But I encourage you to get local soil from a source you know is clean. Build your own soil by using um, different methods of, you know, layering. And there's lots of no-till groups that could probably help on Facebook. Find a way to build your own soil. This was the first time I've ever purchased bagged soil. I have purchased bagged worm castings in the past, but I generally don't like to buy amendments. To really be truly self-sufficient, we need to learn to make our own soil and make our own fertilizers from what we have available on our own properties and in our own area. And, I mean, if you eat food, you can have really great compost, uh, from all the food waste and peels and things like that. So yeah, w we need to learn to be truly self-sufficient now in these days and uh, learn to build our own soil from what we have. So it's always a learning process and I'm still learning. And I'm going to take you on a little garden tour now that things are starting to pick up again. So I'm sure you've seen this in past videos if you follow me. This is my Josta, which is pretty much just a black currant. But they get much bigger black currants. It's a cross between a black currant and a gooseberry. This is really coming along well. In my previous video, I showed how to deadhead the rhododendron. So unfortunately, that's not in a pretty stage right now. But there's lots of beautiful new growth coming out on it for next year. This is the garden that got hit the hardest with the mixture of um, cat droppings and then bad soil. So I'm pretty much letting this take care of itself with uh, mints and thyme and green onions. And I have um, fever few that just seeded itself here and it's absolutely beautiful. How pretty that is. So I still have my green grape. It almost died, but it's coming along. So I took a cutting from this green grape and set a new one on this side so at least I can get my arbor even again. Now another method I used to remediate the soil was I pretty much let anything grow that wants to grow to provide good soil coverage. Bare soil is probably the worst thing you can do for your garden. And then I used a lot of nitrogen fixers that can also provide me with food. So I planted peas just about everywhere. And I have a video on how I got some inexpensive pea seeds. I do collect my own pea seeds as well. But I wanted to put a lot more in this year. And lettuce is gorgeous. These leafy lettuces are pretty easy to grow in pretty much any condition. And I have the Paris Island Coss growing in behind the red leaf because that seems to deter the slugs. The red ones are less uh, likely to get slug damage. I have a lot of pollinators here. They love the borage. And this was a borage that just seeded itself. And it's in my lettuce bed and I don't care. That's where I'm letting it grow. So... All the lettuce here. 
Another thing I use aside from peas is beans and buckwheat. I'm actually trying a sorghum and I almost didn't want to plant it this year because I, I was afraid I'd just waste the seeds, but the sorghum's doing better than corn. I've never had a lot of luck with corn, but uh, the sorghum's doing very well and it should be sending up shoots soon. Some stray potatoes came up from last year and again, I just, I'm letting everything that wants to grow, grow. So I intermixed some buckwheat throughout the whole garden and I've learned that they actually like partial shade, which I'll show you in a little bit, but I love the buckwheat flowers. Look how pretty they are. And I just bought a one kilogram sack of organic buckwheat groats, the whole buckwheat with the hulls left on. And that's what I used for planting because it was much more inexpensive than buying buckwheat seeds. As you can see, this is only about 3 p.m. and a lot of the garden is under a lot of shade right now. This is the wild rose. I cut this back and it's come back prettier than ever. Wild roses really love a good cutting back and uh, I haven't shaped it up this year. I'm not really focused on the aesthetics this year. And these are absolutely stunning. I love blue flowers. And this is just a wild loosestrife that I planted many years ago. Just have a bit of remay over my brassicas because I don't know if you noticed it there, but the uh, cabbage moths are on the go, so we don't want them laying eggs in the brassicas. There's one right there, and that's the best organic form of insect control for brassicas. So let's just see the pollinator garden gets bigger every year, that just evolves on its own. Whatever wants to grow here grows here and I just trim out the edge. So let's just head out back. Oh, I want to show you that hosta. There's a hosta that I rescued from a gravel pit and it is massive. It did get a few little bug bites, but it's beautiful, beautiful hosta. I love the variegation in the leaves. And as I mentioned before, most of my garden was either started by seed or plants that I rescued or seeds that I collected from um, local native plants. All right, head out back. So out back here, this is one of the covers that I didn't put out front for my raised beds. I decided just to grow, try some watermelons. Really not thinking I'm going to get anything. This is also a fairly shaded area. It was shaded like the rest of the yard uh, up until now, so it only gets evening sun. But it is sending out some shoots, so you never know. I might actually get a, a watermelon. And back here in another shady spot, I just planted oats, just oats, groats, and peas. And, you know, it's not too bad for poor soil and for growing in pretty much complete shade. These are oats. They're quite young still. They're quite small, but I can feel some oats forming in there. Oh, we have some oats. Look at that. There's some little oats here. So I'm not going to get any significant amount of cereal oats this year. This is just a little trial garden. That's what I do around. I want to have an extra little spot that I can plant something. I wanted to plant the peas here because this is where I dumped a lot of the bad soil. So I wanted to plant the peas here for nitrogen fixers. 
and then I just intermix some oats and the juncos got a lot of them before they germinated because the juncos loved the oat kernels so a lot of it was gone to bird seed and here's our new garden I don't know if you remember the woodland garden it was very small um, we cut out 60 trees and yes I cried and I still wanted to leave the perimeter of trees you can still see the neighbors through but again it's very very shaded so I'm gonna be it's not that I won't grow anything it's just that it's gonna be a longer season for me and I'm gonna be behind so hopefully we will have a good fall if I have a good September I should be fine I've already harvested spinach and arugula they don't mind the shade and that's more brassicas under here we just built some frames using an old uh, what would you call it it's it's like one of those old closet organizers so we took it apart and and used that to make a cover something to keep the remay up off the plants a little bit because I find when it rains the remay will uh, squat down the plants. I'm not a huge fan of remay but my husband volunteered on a farm this year so we got it for a very inexpensive price and it definitely is. I wish there was a, a, a natural version that could be composted because this is synthetic but it will last a good many years if you take care of it. So I'll roll it up on a dry day when we're done with it and uh, I'll keep that and reuse it. I would like to see a natural version that we could compost. So I have onions. The turnips are really, really late. Carrots are doing pretty good. I'm having trouble with beets in this soil. I did for the last two years. Beets and squash. Are, we're having a lot of trouble. Uh, some of my squash picked up quite well. This is the best chair I've ever had for beans and corn. So beans are all going to flower. Again I'm leaving quite a lot of things in here. These are bread seed poppies. Carrots. These were from my own seed. I collected from my own carrots. These are mostly transplants here. It's really interesting how the upper area is doing a little bit better than the lower area. And I'm wondering if we didn't mix in the amendments quite as well as we should have. But just look at the beans. <laughs> now, these were supposed to be bush beans, but they don't look very bushy to me. They're, they're like super, super tall. And this is an outdoor girl tomato. And it's actually doing quite well outdoors. And this was a really... S I stuck this plant outdoors. I usually don't grow tomatoes outside. I'll only do them in the cold frame. But um, this one was a really wimpy one that looked like it was going to die. So I stuck it out here and it's coming along. Corn is pretty big, but it doesn't have any tassels yet. I think a couple might. We had some mustard come up naturally, and this uh, this is my gray zucchini. And they're starting to produce a few zucchinis in here now. So, you know, it's not the best. We have a lot more space to grow, but again, it's quite shaded. So this side gets like four hours evening sun this side gets four hours morning sun and it's not ideal for growing but you know we'll still produce a good bit of food out of this i'm expecting to get probably close to you know a thousand carrots but i'm not expecting to get too many beets not sure what's going on with the beets but they really really don't like that soil And there's buckwheat and I'm going to take you down now and show you how much the buckwheat loves the shade. Buckwheat down here is like three feet tall. <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. So 
this is an almost full shade. So I know that it prefers shade. And it's kind of really cool down here as well. And this little area here is where it gets a little bit of sun, dappled sun come in. And it's not doing quite as well. But it all filled out quite good. I'll insert a couple of pictures to show you what we did. Because we re rebuilt the two compost bins. Because they were getting really old. And they started to rot. And they were built with logs. And they last a long time. This one was like 17 years old. And then we opened up all the trees. And the only one we didn't get rid of is that birch. Although it is shadowing things quite a lot. And have a new woodland garden. As you can see, we have rocks everywhere. These are the small ones. <laughs> and all of these were what we removed from this area here. We also rebuilt our log compost bins, that one there, as well as that one there. And we tidied up around here where we just sort of keep, this is like the ugly spot of the garden where we keep some things. And uh, you can see the stack of logs there. From the trees we took down small ones here and larger ones over there. So now I have a bed that I'm planting out my raspberries and I have some garlic there. I moved the gooseberries over here and I'm starting a new herb garden. And my husband had to take out the roots. We can't get a tractor back here so all the tree roots, he used a jack and jacked them out by hand. I'll throw in a few pictures here showing you that. <laughs> Luckily, we did have a nice, an early spring. So what we did with all the rocks that we tore out of the garden is we built a retaining wall. So it was about 15 loads of rocks and that's about two and a half, three feet deep on one side and we filled them all in there. These were all hand-picked rocks. <laughs> so it's a lot sunnier back here now. It's a lot more opened up. Now I'm really hoping at some point in time we're going to expand our food forest and permaculture to a larger lot because the whole entire lot we have here, including our driveway and home and all that, it's just a half an acre. And you can grow plenty in a half an acre, but uh, I'd like to expand it to have uh, more fruit trees and an orchard and maybe a some maple trees as well. So I'll take you out front. Nothing much has changed out there. And we'll have a look at the flowers. So you all know that Lady's Mantle is one of my favorites. I prefer it over hostas. Big beautiful leaves are stunning when it rains or if there's any morning dew. And it can grow in pretty much any condition. So this garden again, I let this evolve and it changes every year. There's a great big lady's mantle. It's almost the color of lemonade now with the soft green sprays on the top. And we have a white rose here. This is just a wild variety of rose. The blooms are almost finished on it.
Up top I got rid of all the daylilies and I planted Abbot's Wood Potentillas. Uh, I moved some shrubs and then I started more in between from cuttings, so I'm hoping to make a privacy hedge on the top. And we just have a whole mixture of heirloom flowers, wild flowers, um, some flowers I started from seed. A lot of these came from old homesteads. And I can tell you the bees love sedums. A gold flame spirea, and then a regular spirea is there next to it. The regular ones get more flowers. The gold flame are more showy in the fall. Well, what I have here, and I'll probably have an upcoming video, is we found an old futon frame in the woods, and I took this hand, like the, that's the arm edge, back, and I'm going to make a little garden gate here going up the path with it, so we just sanded a bit of rust off it and give it a quick flick of linseed oil paint and now we'll uh, work on making it into a gate. Mallow is one of my favorites. Let's just take a look up here and see if I have any poppies left. And this apple tree does need uh, an extensive trimming. This was one I started from seed and I'm using it for root stock. And this is the apple graft that I grafted on a couple years ago, and it took quite well. So I'm going to trim this out. I have a snail. How did it get up that far? I'm going to trim this out in the fall and then uh, put some new grafts on it in the spring. And this is the old-fashioned snowberry hedge. And we come around here, and that's the Catoni Aster. The Rosa Multiflora, or Multifloral Rose, is finished blooming now, but for about a month the fragrance was amazing. The flower is very tiny and not really significant, as many other roses, but it's a stunning, stunning plant. I like the shape of it, and the bees love it, and I love the fragrance. And we're back around again. Back to the wild rose. So that is a garden tour now for 2022. I think I skipped a couple of years there for doing a garden tour. Maybe maybe I did one the year before last. Mmm, this wild rose smells so good. Have smell. And nasturtiums are also good nitrogen fixers. And they make a nice addition to salads. So I'm hoping now we'll get everything back on track with the garden and uh, have a, a decent harvest. Well, if, if nothing else, I'm going to live off peas and beans. I hope you enjoyed.